Hey homies, what's good? It's the Tominator, and today we'll be resuming the Best Body Parts series, counting down the top 10 forearms of all time. Now when it comes to bodybuilding, the forearms are kind of underappreciated if you ask me. You rarely hear anybody mention them, and guys with weak forearms often seem to sort of get a pass. So I guess they're kind of like calves in the sense that they hardly even seem to judge them at all. But it's these little detail muscles, if you will, that can help distinguish the truly genetically gifted and completely developed bodybuilders from the rest of the field. Now, roughly speaking, there's two major muscle subgroups to be concerned with here. The flexors on the underside of the forearm, which give the muscle its thickness and vascularity. And the brachioradialis, that diagonal slab running along the upper, outer portion of the forearm that really helps tie them in with the upper arms. And yes, of course, there's also the forearm extensors on the posterior surface, but these are rarely displayed to any significant effect in bodybuilding poses, aside from maybe the most muscular shot, so they come secondary. If I had to put numbers to how I'm weighting this then, I'd say it's about 55% forearm flexors, 35% brachioradialis, and 10% forearm extensors. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Now, we're going to go about this a little differently by kicking things off with an honorable mention, Dorian Yates. Yeah, I know it's a surprising exclusion, especially considering that Yates' alleged 19-inch forearms would represent some of the largest on the entire list. But at the same time, it's all relative. And relative to the rest of his physique, Dorian's forearms just didn't stand out all that much to me. He definitely had some beefy forearm flexors, there's no question. You could see that any time he hit a front double bicep shot. And compared to his upper arms, which were always a little undersized next to his humongous torso, even before all the tears, his forearms were indeed an impressive sight. But while you can certainly find a few flattering photos that play them up, I was generally never that blown away by his brachioradialis development. As we'll see soon enough, Yates couldn't hold a candle to most of the modern day guys on this list in that regard. So yeah, even though they were far above average, I consider Dorian's forearms to be a little overrated. Certainly they were nowhere near as exceptional as his back or calves. And this is why he ultimately fell just short. But for what it's worth, if we extended this beyond a top 10, Yates would probably be next in line. Alright, but onto the list proper, where Larry Scott starts us off at number 10. Here you had a true pioneer of arm development. Those arms were ideally proportioned, with incredibly low insertions, especially in the biceps and forearms. Unlike most of the guys competing today, old school bodybuilders like Larry actually trained the forearms directly. What a novel concept, right? Which is why it shouldn't come as too much of a shock that the golden era completely dominates the first part of this video. I've never understood why a professional bodybuilder wouldn't train them. I mean, how hard is it to throw in a couple sets of wrist curls at the end of an arm or back day? To me, it's just inexcusably lazy to neglect them. But anyway, not only were Scott's forearms full and massive, they were also highly aesthetic. I doubt even Arnold himself could improve upon this shot. Certainly, he's not besting Larry in the forearm department. Alright, but next up at number 9, we've got Sergio Oliva, another certified legend of bodybuilding who you may be thinking deserves a higher placing. Well, at one point I was actually flirting with the possibility of taking both him and Larry Scott off of the list altogether, so just be thankful they made it. But yeah, Sergio's exactly the type of guy I was referring to in that little preamble about how great forearm development can help us identify the true genetic freaks because the myth wasn't missing a single body part. Many people, myself included, consider him to be the most genetically gifted bodybuilder who ever lived. And witnessing something like this, is it really so hard to see why? Look at the silhouette he carved, look at those perfect proportions. Sergio had beastly forearms, and arms in general, especially for his time period. And while he wasn't known for being overly vascular, this is one area where Oliva did boast some impressive veiny detail. His son, Sergio Oliva Jr., also sports some exemplary forearms. This appears to be one genetic strength he inherited from his dad. Maybe he'll be considered among the top 10 in years to come, but for now, he hasn't yet earned that distinction. 
But back to Oliva Sr. This is a great picture because it showcases the mass and cuts through the brachioradialis and extensors on the one arm, and the thickness and vascularity of the flexors on the other. And you can note just how low his insertion points are here. There's almost no gap between his wrist and forearm muscles. And of course, we gotta show his iconic victory pose since he's the best to ever do it. Though admittedly, if we're focusing solely on the forearms themselves, then there's at least one other guy who surpasses him on this one. But we'll come back to that later. For now, let's carry on to number eight, Mike Menser. Mike's another example of crazy forearm genetics. Pretty much everyone on this list has low insertions, and Menser was no exception. He also had a ton of veins snaking through this region, which lent an element of freakiness to an otherwise aesthetic old-school physique. From the back, you can note how prominent those forearms were. In fact, the right one there is so bulbous, it almost looks shopped. But I think that's just the angle. And they really helped cap off his most muscular, one of the hardest and densest looking of his era. Menser's physique just oozed compact power in a way that few others from the 70s or early 80s could ever hope to match. Franco Colombo would probably be the only other guy with that quality that comes to mind. And of course, you've got to have great forearms to pull off these straight arm poses, like the mantis pose pictured right. He was also fond of hitting this overhead shot, essentially a modified victory pose. This was one of his signatures, and it simply wouldn't work with little twigs for forearms. But luckily Mike never had to worry about that problem. Okay, but while we're on the topic of old school, it doesn't get much older than this with Chuck Sipes, Mr. America of 1959. Chuck is definitely worth an honorable mention, and it was tough to have to cut him, because his forearms were monstrous and way ahead of their time. He also won the Mr. World in 1968, and even competed at the Olympia one time in 67, where he placed second behind, who else? Sergio Oliva. Back in those days, bodybuilders were also celebrated for their feats of strength, as illustrated here in one such photo shoot. That's him there on the right, with Frank Zane on the left, and Sergio in the middle. A really cool classic pick, and you gotta appreciate the brachioradialis on Sipes here. Here's a comparison with the next entry on our list, that's Chuck's arm there on the left with all the veins, but for my money, Viator's was just a bit bigger and better. That's right, Casey Viator checks in at number 7. This guy had massively developed forearms, they were easily his most standout body part. I like how he made a point of actually showing them off on stage too. Not enough bodybuilders seem to do this today with these smaller muscle groups. How often do you ever see someone think to point out his calves or forearms nowadays? It's ironic because, especially when it comes to the calves, these are increasingly rare commodities that would really help set you apart from the rest of the field. But as for Viator, he displayed great balance between his flexors and brachioradialis. This is what I'd call a complete set of forearms, and he definitely earns his spot here. Gunnar Rosbo comes in at number 6. Gunnar isn't exactly a household name, but in bodybuilding circles, he's become practically synonymous with top-notch forearm development, as this was really his claim to fame. He could probably warrant an even higher ranking, but my top five is pretty elite, so try to reserve judgment for now. Of all the old-school names on this list, though, I hold Gunnar in the highest regard when it comes to this particular body part. They were allegedly 20 inches around at his peak, which is absolutely ludicrous if that's true, and possibly the largest measurement of any pro bodybuilder in history. But the eyeball test would beg to differ. I can't imagine his forearms actually being larger than most of the names to come, especially given when he competed back in the late 70s and early 80s, because bodybuilders back then simply weren't as massive as they are today. Then again, he was pretty tall, I believe over 6 feet, so I suppose it is possible. But anyway, here's a funny little tidbit of Gunnar's unconventional dietary approach, let's just say. Sounds like a fun guy. But then again, I don't see how eating hot dogs and chugging beer is gonna exactly help you win any bodybuilding titles. Okay, and on to the second half, where Flex Lewis makes his first appearance at number 5. I'm honestly baffled why Lewis's name isn't brought up more often in these best forearm discussions, as he's easily among the most impressive you'll find in the current ranks. 
Maybe he just tends to get overlooked because he was a 212 competitor. I don't know, but he definitely deserves more respect. His brachioradialysis, brachioradiali, what the heck is the plural form of that word? I don't know, but anyway, this was one of the main advantages he had over Hattie Chupan when those two collided back at the Asian Grand Prix in 2017. Hopefully, if this coronavirus crap ever dies down, we'll get to see a rematch with both of them on the Olympia stage in 2020. Now that would be a spectacle I'd pay to see. In many ways, Flex Lewis was like the 212 version of Phil Heath. Super complete, dry, and ripped with full round muscle bellies. Except in Flex's case, his forearms are probably the best aspect of his entire arms, which is saying something because those buys and tries are nothing to sneeze at. But speak of the devil, here's Phil himself checking in at number four. Wait, fourth? You're kidding me, right? Yeah, I know, I know. Trust me, guys, I originally had him pegged for first, too. But the more I researched and really scrutinized these photos, the more I realized the one flaw in Phil's forearms, and that's that they insert a little high. You can see how they end somewhat abruptly around the midpoint of his forearms. It's not a big deal, but in a list this stacked, it's one of the main things that resulted in him dropping outside the top three. Though it has to be said, his brachioradialis is second to none. If this was just about the brachioradialis rather than the forearms at large, Phil would probably come out on top, because those things had their own area code, man. As I've stated before in past videos, Phil's forearms in that front double by literally resemble an inverted pair of calves. It's like he has goddamn softballs lodged up in there. It's really a crazy feature, and nobody else quite duplicates it. However, the downside of all this is that his flexor muscles kind of get overshadowed, and for this reason I couldn't rate him any higher. Still a legendary set of forearms that will go down as some of the very best ever. Okay, but if it's any consolation, Phil and this next guy were so close you could practically flip a coin between them, because Rolly Winkler lands at number 3. Now, while Rolly might have soundly defeated Heath when it came to the triceps, I don't think too many would rate him over Phil in terms of the forearms. Well, I'm here to buck the trend because Rolly has the better forearm flexors, that's for sure. Here's a great comparison somebody conveniently fused together, and it definitely illustrates my point. His muscle bellies were simply longer, and he brought more vascularity to the table as well. It's debatable, but at the end of the day, I couldn't deny it any longer. Rolly has the better forearms, to my eyes at least. As the saying goes, your mileage may vary. But even in terms of the brachioradialis, Winklar isn't far behind. I think the main reason he isn't more recognized for this feature is because those triceps are so utterly mind-blowing, they kind of distract from how remarkable his forearms are as well. Paul Dillette was another freaky mass monster who deserves a shout-out. Paul had exceptional thickness through the forearms, allowing him to pull off difficult poses like the crucifix with gusto. And you can appreciate how truly gigantic they must have been dwarfing even Dorian's here back in 94. But the thing with the lead is that, compared to his enormous upper arms, they didn't stand out at all. He was just too well-balanced for his own good here, and that's why he didn't quite make the cut. Anywho, on to the top two, where the one and only Frank McGrath finishes runner-up. He's been called the real-life Popeye, and with good reason. Frank has some of the largest, freakiest-looking forearms you'll ever see. I mean, the vascularity is off the charts. And based on all the insane post-workout photos that regularly circulate on social media, I could easily understand the temptation to crown him as the automatic number one. But as always, we've got to take filtered offstage images with a grain of salt. Because in terms of actual competition, Frank might not even be top three material, if we're being honest, as he's only participated in a handful of pro shows, and his forearms tend to look a lot less freaky and veiny on stage versus in the gym. They're still obviously a dominant body part for him, however, and totally overpower his upper arms, hence the Popeye comparisons. One reason I rate him above the likes of far more decorated bodybuilders such as Heath and Rowley, even though they're arguably better, is because how much his forearms stand out in relation to the rest of his physique. Rowley's, and to a lesser extent Phil's forearms, remain overshadowed by their triceps. You simply can't say the same about this guy. 
In a way, Frank McGrath is like the antithesis of Phil Heath here. Where Phil is mainly about the brachioradialis, Frank is all about the flexors. If you could somehow combine their strengths together, that'd be like the best of both worlds, and you'd probably wind up with the ultimate unstoppable pair of forearms. Okay, but before we get to number one, just wanted to give a final honorable mention to Jason Huh. And pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that, but whatever. Jason was a lesser known bodybuilder who nonetheless had some killer forearms. This guy basically turned pro back around 2010 or so and quit bodybuilding just a couple years later in order to focus on his family. So if you haven't heard of him, that would probably be why. But he was someone like Frank whose forearms actually rivaled his upper arms. Still, not enough contest showings under his belt to solidify a top 10 placing. But this next gentleman certainly had that, and this is of course the most glaring omission thus far, Lee Priest, coming in at number one. Look, they might not be the biggest, they might not be the freakiest, but as far as I'm concerned, Lee had the best forearms in bodybuilding history, bar none. What he lacked in sheer circumference he made up for with outrageous proportions. Whatever he might have missed in terms of freakiness, which isn't much because those things were freaky, he made up for was shapeliness and a unique aesthetic appeal. Lee knew how to present his forearms like no other. Remember when I said earlier that one other person surpassed even Sergio Oliva's victory pose, at least as it pertains to the forearms? Well, this is him. Priest's forearms in this shot look so outstanding, so unbelievably good, this is what really clinched the win for him right here. I mean, look at that. This was superhuman. It's no wonder he got that Superman tap. In the crucifix, you can see clearly just how low they insert, going all the way down into the wrist. Love him or hate him, one thing's for sure, Lee was truly blessed in the arm department, and perhaps the forearms most of all. Plus, as an added bonus, he even reveals the secret to his humongous forearm muscles. This is priceless, guys, so let me roll the clip for you here. I never normally do this, but you know, of course the camera's here, I thought I'd do a little bit of forearm. Really, you don't need to do this. You know, young kids, young guys, if you masturbate, that's enough. You gotta love the Aussie smartass sense of humor. Just be careful with that advice. You don't want to wind up like Quagmire when he first discovered internet porn. Yikes. See, kids, this is why symmetry is important in bodybuilding. Okay, so anyway, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed, and let me know what you thought of these placings. It was actually a lot of fun making this one since it wasn't nearly as overwhelming as something like biceps, but we still got a good mix of old school and the new school, which is always nice to see. So please remember to drop a like and subscribe for more, but until next time, this has been The Tominator signing off, and I'll be back!